Hey, what's up guys? We have so much to talk about today. Another huge video, I'm sorry for these, we'll get better at them. There's a lot of Apple leaks in news today. Namely, I wanted to talk to you about the iPhone 11 and why Apple is doing what they're doing with the cameras. I see nothing but hate for this online and I'd like to explain to you in the best way that I understand why they're doing what they're doing. Otherwise, I am doing a giveaway with the Bro King for AirPods 2, we're gonna be giving away two of those. Description, it has all the details down below. Let's get into it. So. First thing I wanted to start with, a little backtracking here, is the first real Apple phone. I thought it'd be interesting to render this. So this is a concept from Hartma Esslinger. All there is is pictures of it online. We recreated it. Steve Jobs hired this guy to actually make some early Apple products. Eventually the Apple IIc used his styling, but the Apple phone, this is originally what it looked like before it became the iPhone. Just so you know, like Apple's been trying for the longest time to make a phone. Apple has always been trying to enrich your lives since the very beginning. And it's just interesting to me, the contrast, the iPhone 11 versus what it was. This is basically almost 30 years old and here it is in motion. So I'd like to talk to you about design. First thing, some backtracking. I've never been to college. I'm not qualified, but we've been doing these renders for a long time with the Bro King. We actually met in high school. And it's the craziest thing to me that we're pretty good at what we do and I only wanna get better at it. So we're investing so much into new computers. I wanna be doing this news more and more, but namely design. Like I feel like I'm somewhat qualified to talk about design, but this Panasonic S1 is a perfect example of where design as a whole is going right now in the industry. It's a big camera. It is chunky and everyone cries about how heavy and big it is, but all of these companies, not only Panasonic, Apple as well, there's a lot of parallels here, is they're actually changing and embracing the thicker, larger body styles. We heard in the last video that the iPhone 11 will be growing in thickness, the lens will be shrinking. Like you're, you're gonna start to see a lot of bold moves. Like the big cameras on the iPhone is a very bold design statement. Something I noticed on this guy is like the bold text up here, this very bold viewfinder. Just they're embracing these chunky, big controls. But ultimately, oh my goodness, I love this camera so much. Like you could never convince me that growing bigger or fatter for products is a bad thing, you know? So just want you to understand the iPhone is growing thicker this year, bigger cameras, but there's a very good reason for it. And I try to break this apart for you as much as possible, actually taking a look at the cameras. So the last one, the iPhone XS series right here, this is what that looks like. And we modeled this to a T just from the leaked schematics, the leaked shells we've seen. And Apple's lens itself is growing. And this is because they're increasing the sensor sizes. For the first time ever, the iPhone is getting larger sensors. Apple has increased the megapixel count because there's no point in increasing it without increasing the sensor itself. So the lens is growing, sensors are growing, megapixel count is growing, and in the process, what are you getting? Essentially, you're getting an ultra wide lens camera and that will enable the iPhone, as Bloomberg said, to crop out images, adjust them later, just change things you usually wouldn't be able to do. In the process, you're gonna have better low lights, better quality, better zoom, potentially better optical image stabilization because all three lenses will be stabilized. So you're getting a lot, like who doesn't like better photos? And the only logical way for the iPhone camera to evolve into that direction is to grow the sensor size. To grow the sensor sizes, the design has to change. Either Apple could make a really large stoplight on the back or they can do this. And from a designer standpoint, the triple lens actually sort of makes sense. And I'm gonna share that more and more with you. I'm warming you up to the idea before it happens. Just know that Apple does what they do for a reason. They try and make ugly features of the iPhone look good. The notch itself is a very good example of that. Now they're doing that with the camera. They're only helping you. They're improving the quality, but as a result, it may not look the best to you now, but trust me, you will get used to it. And you know, one of the coolest things about the Huawei P30 Pro for me is the periscope camera design. It's nuts, it's true innovation. And I thought, why not have that on the iPhone? So I wanted to show you the concept of that. We could theoretically have one day completely flush camera lenses on the iPhone, but Apple would be required to innovate. And I don't know if this is something that's patented. I'd actually need to look into that, but this is what it would look like and I would love it on the iPhone. By the way, I just wanted to talk about my qualifications. So like, I, we were looking back at videos last night and it's the funniest thing to me that I was sitting in April, April, May of 2017, showing you the iPhone 10 design like months in advance of it being released. Just to show you, I'm not here to deceive you. I literally just take the news leaks and we rework them and try and share them with you because it excites me and I wanna improve Apple as a company. And the best way to do that is to criticize them, to to share information, I don't know, just, 
I only want the best for Apple, just know that. By the way, I wanted to address something. The square design you're seeing in our actual renders is not truth. I'm showing you and Apple what I'd like the iPhone to be, but that's likely, in my opinion, this is complete speculation, that's the design of the 2020 iPhone. That's the one with a huge redesign. This year is still gonna be that rounded edge realistically. But like, I, I like including that because it looks cooler to me and I want Apple to do that. It's just, it's gonna take a minute. The next thing I'd like to talk about is Ming Chi Ko's revised report. So the last one he published earlier this week got mistranslated. A lot of stuff that was reported was inaccurate. So he released a revised report and it mainly talks about micro LED. Micro LED is the future of screen technology and Apple is leading the charge to give you micro LED. First off, I'd like to explain what it is. Micro LED is a completely different technology from organic LED. It uses inorganic compounds to light up pixels. Basically a very, very tiny LED where before it wasn't possible, now we're getting to the possibility where these screens are coming out. And he says the first screen using this technology will come out later this year, the 6K standalone display. So the benefits of a micro LED include better battery efficiency. The screen itself can be thinner because the components to make a micro LED are thinner themselves. They can be brighter. Individual LED counts can actually last longer because it's inorganic. It's not gonna burn out as fast. It's better viewing angles, just all around and you can shut down the pixels individually to get that perfect black just like organic LED. So in every single way, it's better than organic LED displays and Apple is gonna be introducing that for the first time this year on the 6K display. If you don't understand the ramifications of that, you, you really should because it's gonna change everything. Everything will be better. Also, the displays could be higher resolution as well. If you look at the pixel structure, the pixels themselves can be condensed further because they're using a completely different structure. So they're starting with the 6K standalone display then they're gonna release that on the iMac. And then from there, they'll take it even further. And we're gonna be seeing an iPad, a 10 to 12 inch iPad sometime in 2021, says Ming Chico, with a micro LED display. So that's another device that's gonna be getting that. And we actually designed it to look like the iPhone 10, 10S series, because I think Apple will be inevitably adding another camera to the iPad. Yes, people do take pictures with their iPad, believe it or not. And why not? I mean, it'll be easy. It's a parts bin device. And I think this is what they could do. It'll still be a metal back, just a run up on the camera. It could still look very, very cool. And my iPad is one of my favorite Apple products in my life, aside from series four Apple watch. So by all means improve it. So this is what I see happening. Remember they're not releasing a refresh of the pro this year. So in 2020, we're probably going to see a dual lens version. And then in 2021, we're going to see that micro led by the way, 2020 dual lens is my speculation. It's just a guess. And just so you know, the foldable iPhone concept would not be possible without micro led technology. Organic led is great, but you can see the flaws right now in the galaxy fold because it really does take a toll on that display. Apple has so many patents regarding a flexible display, but they all include micro LED display technology. So that wouldn't be possible without it. And if you ever want a foldable iPhone, yes, we do need micro LED. Okay, and the 16 inch MacBook Pro. So lost in the translation errors, we actually thought that that would be delayed until 2021, but that's not the case. The 16 inch MacBook Pro is actually coming out this year, and we're gonna be seeing a revision of it in 2021 with that micro LED display. So just to be clear, that means we're getting an all new generation of the MacBook Pro later this year. And that very much excites me because this one is just plagued with problems. 9 to 5 Mac made a very good point. One of the reasons why Apple may be accelerating the release of that MacBook is because the butterfly keyboard issues, which are just numerous, they're insane. Like Apple has a huge issue on their hands that they're not fully willing to address. So they'd like to flush that out of the way and get the new generation in as soon as possible. Hopefully it doesn't have the same issues. I love the butterfly keyboard. It's a great keyboard, but it seems to fail a lot and that's not very good. Also the flex gate issue where a lot of people's displays are just dying because you close open it and it's not a very secure connection inside. Hopefully they fix that one as well. So the interesting thing about that iPad is that we're skipping organic LED displays altogether. I personally mused about this. I'm like, will Apple add OLED to the Macs, to the iPads? And really no, we're just out doing that. So there's no point adding such a fickle display technology to iPads and the larger that an organic LED display gets, the more more prone it is to issues, in my opinion. So they're skipping that altogether and just going to the ultimate superior technology micro LED. Earlier this week, Sharp dropped a 31.5 inch 
120 hertz monitor that also happens to be HDR capable. It is an absolutely monstrous display, but it requires insane IO connectivity. You'll need insane ports and they just don't exist. So a lot of people are wondering, will this come to this year's iMac or 6K standalone display? No, first off, this is an 8K display and it's not 6K, it's not micro LED, which is rumored for it. So very unlikely, not to mention you'd need some insane capability like Thunderbolt 5 by then probably, who knows? Another thing I'd like to mention is ProMotion on the iPhone. If Apple is watching this, I want you to know that is my number one requested feature for the iPhone. If you've ever used the new iPads, you just, you know. There is no going back to any other display after using a 120 Hertz refresh rate display. Here's the problem. I don't think this will be possible until micro LED because currently nobody makes a display that's efficient enough to run on such a small device with an organic LED panel behind it and running at 120 Hertz. So not possible probably for a few good years unless Apple really try to make it happen, but no supplier right now is even thinking about this display. I've been monitoring Sharp, uh, Samsung, Japan display. No one is trying to make this display, but it's the most obvious way to get people to come to iPhone and stick on it because no one is doing this and it, it will change the way you love your iPhone completely, I think. So my number one request, but I totally understand why it's not possible yet. So I'm, I'm waiting eagerly and hopefully within five years we can get ProMotion on the iPhone. A couple of exclusive leaks with Max Weinbach. First off, he says we might be getting some hardware at WWDC. It's not a sure thing, but it might happen. So keep your eyes out for that. And I think this hardware might pertain to the Mac Pro, which was rumored to get shown at this event. We'll definitely see. Also, Max Weinbach is saying Face ID is here to stay for a good three years. So for at least three years, we will be seeing Face ID on our phones. It'll be getting refined with time and we'll certainly see if there's improvements. Apple could improve the distance it takes to unlock your phone, the, the speed, a lot of software stuff like unlocking your phone while laying on your side should be a certain thing. Just make it more usable, more natural, more human in a way. The last one Max Weinbach says, and this one really piques my interest is we're gonna be seeing some sort of Omega chip. He says that behind closed doors, employees are calling one of the chips Apple is working on Omega. Now, I don't know if this pertains to the Apple A13. I'd assume it does. We had A12 Bionic, so A13 Omega sounds incredible. And wow, that sounds powerful. It's gonna be seven nanometer lithography process refined. Here's a question I have for you guys. Would you rather have that MagSafe connector that we demonstrated for you in the last video or USB-C? My personal opinion is we're gonna see that shift to USB-C with the major iPhone refresh next year. That's the one that's gonna be the super cycle. The new body design, I think the iPad Pro design. That's my personal guess and I hope so. But the iPad Pro design, USB-C, a five nanometer chip for the first time. I doubt 5G will be a thing by then, but it's gonna be a major refresh in 2020. Will it come with USB-C very likely? And that'll be the last stopgap until Apple's future with a portless phone. So we might be seeing MagSafe pass then until Apple gets everything on board. They'll probably add it back to the MacBook. And this is my speculation, but it only makes sense. Imagine every single device with that MagSafe connector standard and USB-C just won't matter by then. I don't know. I don't know. We haven't even adopted USB-C properly yet and I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Just think about the future here. I doubt Apple wants to stick on USB-C for long because they have better things in the works. So here's a theory of mine. And I actually thought about this while reading this website. It goes into detail about the Apple car, why Apple's using titanium, what gave them the inspiration for it, how they made it. It's, it's a beautiful site. You guys should check it out. But here's my point. Titanium is the superior material. Like there is bar none, no better material on this earth for creating things in my opinion than titanium like I bought a couple knives recently that are made out of pure titanium and they are incredible like it it's light it's a strong material it barely scratches this case that I dropped from 50 feet you can barely tell that it was damaged like there's no dents it's at most a very tiny groove that, that got affected here. So titanium can also repel energy very, very efficiently. 97% with a titanium hammer of the energy goes into the nail versus 70 on a stainless steel hammer. So titanium here is the ultimate material is my point. Apple, I'm sure, will inevitably switch to titanium on the iPhone, but oh boy, are we gonna pay for it? Two, two and a half thousand dollars by then, who knows? Apple has applied for a couple patents also regarding the touch bar on the smart keyboard. So smart keyboard three, likely inbound, 
with the touch bar on top. And tying this in, on my MacBook Pro, I finally found a use and a love for the touch bar. There's a new application called POC, which enables you to have your applications displayed right there for easy switching. And it is so ridiculously fast. I really implore you guys to give this a try. I'll link it down below. This is beautiful. Like finally a use for the touch bar and I hope it only gets better from here. Also, Apple is working on Face ID for their MacBooks, their iMacs. I mean, it's almost inevitable it would go there. It's just this patent details it in a very interesting way. Instead of being a facial scan, which it might still be, but in addition, Apple is gonna be using retinal scanning on the iMac, on your MacBook Pro. So your eyeballs are gonna be getting scanned every single time using this, potentially, or Apple could just use the facial scan. Who knows? Apple likes to claim all the technologies before anyone else does. Owning all the patents, even if you won't use them, is the pillar of innovation. So here's a very interesting one. The UK is leaving the European Union, and they came to Apple with a very special request to verify citizens moving back and forth, and that's to add passport support to the NFC capability on the iPhone. They were able to confirm on their side that Apple said yes, so it's inevitable. iOS 13 will be adding passport support but why stop there? Apple, please open it up to where you can scan like your dorm room card. And I know you can do that in some areas, maybe like the pool card for your apartments. Just NFC is incredibly capable and it could add such a convenience to your life, not having to carry around tags everywhere when your iPhone could tag them once and just have them at the ready always. And also this is me being a reporter. So two stories that I might have stumbled upon and I might be completely wrong. Who knows? I wanna talk to you about them. First off is, is Apple shipping their iPhones dead? I bought a lot of Apple products this week I'm upgrading my setup everywhere I can and every one of them was dead out of the box and it puzzled me. Is Apple shipping phones on purpose dead? The smart battery cases were dead. My new iPhone XS Max was dead. The iPad Pro I bought was dead. And is it a strategy that they're employing or was I just unlucky and all of them died before I got to them? Also another thing, and this one comes from a very good friend, Federico Serva. We did the 512 gigabyte mod on the iPhone 8 together. By we, I mean he did. And he's saying there might be an issue with the iPhone XS. And actually one of his top earners for repairs, in case this happens to you, I want you to know, I'll leave his contact down below, is a possible, and I'm calling this a very tentative gate issue. The iPhone XS uses a low heat solder method for securing the Apple A12 in the actual logic board. So this is it right here. When the iPhone gets jostled, and I had this issue, I brought an iPhone in for repair just for this, it actually gets displaced out of the heat sink here, and his job is to go and re-dot it, re-solder it onto the board, or not re-solder, but just reseat it onto the board. And it's a very expensive repair, but it seems to be quite common nowadays. So if you had that issue, I'd like to hear about it. Leave it down below. All right guys, so there it is. I really hope to improve the videos throughout the coming weeks. And I hope you guys see that change. Like I actually wanna really, really try because ultimately I love doing this stuff. Why, why not get better at it? Also giving away a couple of pairs of AirPods with the Bro King, all the info down below. Thanks for watching guys, stay real.